Changes in state and federal health care policy have created an opportunity for tens of millions of dollars in federal reimbursement for inmate medical services. The federal court appointed receiver is responsible for delivering uh, medical care to prisoners in state prisons. Uh, while most of this care is delivered within prison walls, uh, there are certain circumstances which would require an inmate to be referred out to a community hospital uh, for treatment. This generally occurs when uh, an inmate needs a uh, specialty care service, uh, such as a complicated surgery, uh, that can't be delivered in a prison because of a lack of uh, expertise or resources. While federal law generally uh, prohibits the use of federal Medicaid funding for inmate medical services, <clears throat> there is an important exception to this rule. Specifically, uh, if an inmate has been referred out to a community hospital, uh, they can be eligible for Medicaid funding so long as they meet the uh, eligibility requirements uh, that would be uh, required for any individual in the community. Historically, most inmates have not been eligible for uh, Medicaid because most inmates are low-income childless adults which are generally uh, excluded from Medicaid coverage. However, uh, in 2010, the federal government approved a waiver for the state of California allowing it to expand Medicaid eligibility to low-income childless adults uh, in, under a program known as the Low Income Health Plan. Uh, this greatly increased the number of inmates who are potentially eligible for uh, federal funding through Medicaid. In addition, in 2010, the federal government passed uh, the Affordable Care Act, which allows states the option to expand their Medicaid programs and do so uh, with the federal government picking up a 100% share of cost for newly eligible individuals. This has increased the uh, percentage of cost for inmate medical services uh, that are potentially federal re federally reimbursable. Uh, until very recently, the state hasn't implemented a process to draw down federal funding. However, we estimate that in total, uh, the potential federal reimbursements uh, that could be achieved are in the tens of millions of dollars annually. While the state has recently developed a process for drawing down federal reimbursements for inmate medical services, uh, due to a couple of procedural problems, uh, the state has been unable to maximize uh, the available federal funding. Specifically, uh, the receiver has been unable to secure agreements with all counties to enroll inmates into their low-income health plans. Uh, certain counties feel that the $10 per inmate enrollment fee being offered by the receiver to reimburse them for their administrative costs uh, is not sufficient. In addition, the Department of Health Care Services has been unable to process certain Medicaid claims for inmates uh, due to some technical problems, uh, specifically uh, due to a glitch in the software used to process claims, uh, several hundred uh, valid claims have been erroneously rejected. In order to ensure that the state is maximizing the available federal funding, we have a couple of recommendations. First, we're recommending that the legislature hold hearings in order to identify and resolve any remaining obstacles that are preventing the receiver from securing agreements with the counties to enroll inmates in their low-income health plans. For example, this could uh, involve amending state law to require that counties enroll inmates into their low-income health plans as a condition of operating a low-income health plan. Uh, in addition, we are recommending that the legislature ask the Department of Health Care Services to report on the efforts that they are currently taking to address some of the technical problems that are preventing the processing of valid uh, Medicaid claims for inmates. If these uh, issues are resolved, we estimate that the potential federal reimbursements could be in the tens of millions of dollars uh, on an ongoing annual basis.